Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your hour. National Reconciliation Week is a time to celebrate and build on positive and respectful relationships and connections between non-Indigenous Australians and Indigenous Australians. We are here to share and reflect on Sorry Day and the mark of Reconciliation Week. Reconciliation Week brings together three very important dates for our nation and the significance of recognition for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. This week we pay homage and acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of this great nation of ours, both past and present. On the 26th of May, we remember and acknowledge the mistreatment of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, past and present, which we recognise today as the stolen generations. The forcible removal of children from their families and communities has been heartbreaking for many who are survivors of the stolen generation. This highly significant day is our day of healing. The 27th of May marks the anniversary of the 1967 referendum. This was a very significant time in history as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people were voted in by 90% of non-Indigenous Australian population giving us the right to vote. Equal to every Australian. Huh? What's We're walking around your colleague. The 3rd of June marks the historic Mabo decision. In 1992, the High Court of Australia recognised native title and that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have rights over their lands. Australia was no longer referred to as terra nullius. The High Court's decision recognised the fact that Indigenous peoples had lived in Australia for thousands of years and enjoyed rights and freedoms to their land according to their own laws and customs. Aboriginal Australia had been dispossessed of their lands bit by bit as the non-Indigenous colony grew. Conciliation Day is for every Aboriginal to be treated the same yeah. as every Australian and get, get to vote and it's um, for stolen generations. Urara College staff and students are doing their part in recognising and embracing Reconciliation Week and taking steps ensuring that the healing process is in effect and remembered thoughtfully. The theme for this year's Reconciliation Week is In This Together. The meaning behind this is bringing Indigenous and non-Indigenous communities together, working, working together, together, healing, healing the, the past and working towards, towards a brighter future for all Australians. And we are all responsible for creating better communities where Indigenous people and non-Indigenous people are equally valued. Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You Music. Today we're going to learn how to replace the string on an acoustic guitar. The D string is the one that's broken on here. So that's the third one from the top. So one, two, three, that's the D string. So what you need to do first is get the old string off. So just unwrap that from the top there. Chuck it away. All right, so the strings on the, the bridge of uh, an acoustic guitar, they're all held in with these pegs, right? So you can use a pair of pliers to just gently lift that one out. 
and get the rest of the string out. Okay. And you'll remember from a previous episode when I was showing you which strings you need to buy. So Phosphor Bronze is the best one for a, um, a steel string acoustic guitar. So they're the ones that are kind of golden brownish coloured. In guitar world, you count from the bottom string up. So one, two, three, four. So it's the fourth string, the D. So they've got these, they're called ball ends. It's like a little weight on the end where the string is wrapped around to hold it into the bridge. So grab your pin or your peg that you pulled out, put the string into the hole there, and then push the peg down and pull the string up at the same time as you're pushing the peg down, okay? So it grips it nice and tight. Pull and push as hard as you can like that, okay? And then what you need to do is you hoop it into the tuning peg like this. And then, so it needs to wrap in this direction. So it needs to come around to the left. So that's, that's anti-clockwise, that's what they call it. Okay, so when you're winding the string, make sure that it winds underneath itself. So make sure this part goes on the top, okay? So make it nice and neat like these ones. So it needs to go around two or three times so that it holds in place. Okay. Grab the clippers, cut the excess off because you don't want to poke anybody in the eye with that. And now we tune the string. So, remember from a previous episode, you have to give it a good stretch first, just to make sure it's, it's in place. And then we're, we're tuning with harmonics again. And remember, you can get um, a guitar tuner on YouTube to help you if you don't actually have a guitar tuner. So E needs to come up a bit there. That's the same. So you see the string I've just put on there is far too low, so it needs to come right up. in tune. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Welcome. Thanks for joining us on Urara to You to hear another part of God's story. Today it's the part where we, people, come into the picture. Before we hear the story though, there's a message from Pastor Mark at the Lutheran Church. I'd just like to say hello to all the Urara students and um, missing you here at the church, but these past eight weeks have been very different from all of us. Some people have felt very alone, some have had to put plans on hold, and people like yourselves have had to stay in your communities and not been able to go to school. Other people have had the disappointment of not being able to meet up with their family and friends, even just to go to another community. And there have been lots of other emotions that people have felt at this time. As you've probably seen on the media, some people have even been in a panic or very fearful. There were people who were calling other people bad names and all those sorts of things and even arguments. <coughs> But as we are able to finally get together to worship here at Alice Springs Lutheran Church, I'd like to give you all at home a message from John chapter 14, where Jesus says, But you know the Spirit who is with you will keep on living in you. And Jesus said, I won't leave you like orphans, I will come back to you. In a little while the people of this world won't be able to see me, but you will see me. And Jesus was talking about leaving the Holy Spirit with us. And so even though we can't see Jesus in person, he is with us, he is teaching us, he is guiding us, he is telling us that we belong to him, he will never leave us, and he is always there. 
So again, I would just say hello to all the Urara students. I hope that you are keeping safe and we will see you again in the, in the near future. God bless. Let's have a look at the first panel of the Old Testament Bible stories that Ruth painted. It's the story of creation, how the world began. And we heard most of that story last time. How God made everything in six days. And finally, he made people. Let's continue the story from Genesis 2. God said, let's make man in our image to be like us. He can be the caretaker, the one to look after the earth, the skies and the seas. Then God made a man out of the dust of the ground. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God named the man Adam and put him in the Garden of Eden to care for it. Adam could eat any of the fruit growing in the garden. In the middle of the garden was a special tree and God told Adam, you can eat the fruit from any tree that is in the garden, but you must not eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will die. Then God brought the animals to the man so he could name them. Adam gave names to all of the creatures he named the wild ones and the tame animals too. But Adam was lonely and God said, mm, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper for him. God made Adam fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, God took out one of his ribs. Then God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. God brought the woman to Adam. Adam said, her bones have come from my bones. Her body has come from my body. She will be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Adam and Eve were both naked, but they did not feel embarrassed or ashamed. They were happy living in the garden with God. God looked at everything he had made and it was excellent. It was very, very good in every way. Something to think about. God made people in his image. What do you see when you look at your image in the mirror? What do you see when you look at the people around you? I thank God for creating us, loving us and giving us life. Until next time, stay safe and God be with you. Next word we're looking at is the word sphere. Sphere is a name for a 3D circle, like a basketball. Let's spell it. S-P-H-E-R-E. -E, sphere. Next 3D shape is a cube. A cube is another word for any 3D square, like a Rubik's cube or a box. Let's spell it. C U B E, cube. Or another word that some people might call it is the word cuboid, written below. Our next shape is called a pyramid, which is a 3D of a triangle, something you can climb, touch, or hold. Let's spell pyramid. P Y R A M I D Pyramid. Now our next word is a unique word you might not have heard before called a prism. Now a prism is a 3D shape, any 3D shape that you can cut in a particular way and it will stay the same. For example, if you slice up a loaf of bread, all the slices should look generally the same. And the same goes for a cube or a tin can. If you slice it one way, all the slices will look the same. Let's spell it. P-R-I-S-M. 
prism. Now, the last shape we're looking at is called a rectangular prism, which is a 3D shape of a rectangle. Let's spell it. R E C T A N G U L A R P R I S M rectangular Well, this time you try again. You begin packing things in order. Objects that have a similar shape you put together with the larger ones at the back and the smaller ones in the front so customers can see everything. You make sure to pack the boxes nice and straight. And once you do, you can pack them on top of each other because they're fairly level. Once you do that, you straighten them up nicely and begin packing the smaller items near the front. You put the jars and the tins on top of each other that fit with the larger items on the bottom and the smaller on the top so that they can all be seen and all are packed nicely. Part of our episode of Marcus and his mates, Marcus is packing shelves. Uncle Dan gave Marcus the big job of packing the new grocery items on the shelf. At the beginning, Marcus was very excited and started packing the cups near the top shelf. As Marcus unpacked the bags, he began to realize there were a lot of different shapes and items in those bags, so he just decided to pack them whichever way he felt like it. Marcus wanted it to look pretty, but he also wanted it to look interesting, so he packed some cups and put some plates on top of the cups, and then he stacked a few cups on top of each other, and he continued to stack. He put a square box on top of one of the cups and it managed to balance. Then on the next shelf, he put a flashlight. He started putting some tin cans on top of the items and he kept going, adding more and more items in not any particular way. But he started to realize that as he kept stacking and stacking, the shelves were becoming uneasy and suddenly there was a loud crash as many of the items fell on the ground. Marcus was really nervous because it made a very loud noise and he knew his Uncle Dan would come and see the mess that he had made. It did not take long for Uncle Dan to show up and see that all the things had fallen off the shelf, but he wasn't angry at Marcus. Instead, Uncle Dan picked up one of the cans and decided he would help Marcus and show him a proper way of packing shop items. Marcus was very excited to learn. Uncle Dan showed Marcus how items that were similar shapes that could be stacked on top of each other should remain in groups. He stacked the cups all together. Then he decided to stack all the boxes together on top of each other, making sure that the larger items were at the bottom. Then he turned the flashlights up straight to make more space. And he continued to stack the big plates at the bottom with a couple small plates on top of them. Finally, he finished off with putting the Rubik's Cubes on top of the bigger boxes and stacking the cans on top of each other. This was all to show Marcus how to properly pack the shelves. Marcus was relieved that he had learned how to pack things properly and the shelves in the shop looked excellent. Uncle Dan was also very proud of what Marcus had learned. Hey fellas, Miss Sandra here. I'm up in the Clontarf Academy doing my show you my colours. These have been my colours for over 40 years now. Yes, I am that old. But the eels have been going since 1947, but I am not that old. Um, I started following the eels when um, I was about seven years old. And because my mum went for the eels and I said, well, hey, mum, why do we go for the eels? What's, the, what's so good about them? And she said, well, they're our team because we lived in Borkham Hills, which was right next to Parramatta. So you got to follow the team that's in your country. So I was, I've always followed the team in my country and that's the mighty, mighty eels. So show us your colors, fellas. Go to the Yarara 2 Clontarf page. Take some photos of yourself, send them in. Love to see you. Bye. Mary Jane, can you come to the office, please? Mary Jane. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Miss Gina said you want to talk to me. Yes, Miss Gay, I want to go shopping. No, you know you're staying behind this week. Do you remember why? No. We were running around all night last night and it was time to come in and you were never to be found. So you're not going this week. I really want to get shoes. And also I have families in town and this is the only chance I can see them. Well, you definitely can't get your shoes today. You're gonna to have to wait till next week. And I can also call your family and I'll let them know why you're not going into town today. I'm sorry, Miss Gay, for making bad choices. Okay, I appreciate your apology, but because you were running around last night, you do have to stay behind today. Hmm, uh, okay, fine. So in this situation, the student wasn't convincing enough to persuade Miss to let her go shopping. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers, I advise that the following discussion contains names and images of people who have died. We have just observed Reconciliation Week. One of the important people we focus on during this time is Eddie Mabo. He went to court in 1982 to fight for the rights of the Torres Strait Islander and Aboriginal people. How did he do this? You might ask. Well, we have been doing persuasive writing, so let us see how Eddie Mabo used persuasive language to convince the courts of his point of view. I will be using Eddie Mabo's words from his speech that he made in 1981 at the James Cook University. I believe the land I live on has belonged to my people before the British settlers arrived. My reason being that this knowledge has taught to me by my late father and my mother and the elders that contributed to my traditional education. Some of the evidence I have is the fact that the island was divided into three major tribal divisions that governed and protected the land too. When the first white men arrived, they found people as village dwellers who lived in permanent houses in well-kept villages. For those reasons, I am convinced that the land belonged to my people. Long before the arrival of the first British settlers. In all of this, I am sure you are still wondering why. Why do I need to know this? Here's the reason. On the 3rd of June, 1992, 10 years after the Eddie Mabo case, there was a turning point for the recognition of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people's rights. The High Court of Australia made the decision that the term terra nullius, which means land belonging to no one, should never have been used. This meant the Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people had a unique connection to their land. This also meant that they had rights to their land. The Australian Parliament also passed the Native Title Act of 1993. Sadly, Eddie Mabo didn't live to see his victory. But the young people of the Torres Strait Islander and the Aboriginal people are reaping the benefits of that case. Be proud of your history. Welcome back. back. Let's recap on the words that we've learned this week. Mura meaning country or home. Arurka meaning sand hill. Lira meaning creek or rivers. Kwacha meaning water. Apoda meaning hill. Now that we've recapped on the words from week seven, match the correct Arundel words with the correct pictures.
For example, kwacha, water. Don't forget to complete your activity sheets. Stay safe. Look after your families. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. ready to go and get some garden beds and some gardening stuff to make some gardens. See you soon! and we're choosing vegetables because we all like to eat healthy food and fresh food and if we grow it ourselves it's even better and then we can eat it as the staff and we can share it with you girls when you come back into boarding. So we're getting some leeks, we're going to put those in one garden bed and there's some little eggplant that we can grow that are good to cook and we'll get some spinach. Spinach is really good for you and we like pak choy because that way once again, there's lots of little plants in the punnet and we can eat that fresh or we can eat it as stir fry. I think the last thing we'll get is some little beetroot and they will grow nicely in our garden beds as well. So there's some beetroot. So now we've got this, we've got our garden beds, we've got our soil, we've got our sugarcane mulch. Now we need to get a watering can and we need to get some fertiliser because the fertiliser will help them grow big and strong. So when you come to Bunnings, it's a huge building and you have to always look around for what you get. So we're after a watering can and we know it's in the gardening section here and we don't want a tap timer, we don't want a garden hose. We don't want irrigation fittings, we don't want a hose rule, we don't want a sprinkler, but we do want a watering can. So we know we're in the right place. So let's go and we'll come and get one. And here they are. And we are going for a red nine litre watering can. And what we'll do is we'll mix our fertiliser in this and we can feed our plants when they need a good feed of fertiliser. There you go. So here we are in the fertiliser department. Now it's really important that plants get fertilizer because fertilizer to plants is like food to us. We need, we need food to grow big and healthy and plants need fertilizer to grow big and healthy. So what we're going to get today is some sea salt. And sea salt, they call it a liquid fertilizer. So what we'll do is when the plants are in the ground in our garden beds, we'll mix some of this with some water and we'll use a watering can and spray it over our plants and that's like us feeding them and they'll grow big and healthy and give us nice healthy vegetables to eat. Got everything with Laura? So what yep. have we got? We've got garden beds, we've yep. got soil, we've got mulch, mm -hmm. we've got fertilizer, <laughs> we've got a watering can and we've got our seedlings. Yeah. So what do we have to do now? We just gotta pay for it and then pay go. It, load it in the car and then we're back to school. Bye. Well, we have to pay for it and the Bunnings need to know what we're taking. So we'll scan it 